Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today we have Kevin from Turna, which is actually under the umbrella of Unique Sports, if I'm correct. Thank you That's so right. much for joining. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to our conversation here. Yes, awesome. We're so excited to dive deeper into all things Turna Grip, Unique Sports, and everything else. But you mentioned my icebreaker question. And here's one that you probably haven't heard, but I also asked it to some of the play testers that are going to be on a future episode. This is a fun one for tennis players. So what is the first tennis racket that you ever remember playing with? Oh, this is good. So uh, I've played tennis since I was like six years old, right? But other than the wood rackets that I think I started with, which is really sad and ages me, um, uh, I think after that, when I became like a competitive player, the one that was like near and dear to my heart was the old Becker Puma racket that you could adjust the length of. Oh man! And you put a little, you put a little like quarter in the in the butt cap, and you could make it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter to dial in your preferences. So oh, that's I awesome. love that thing. That's, that's so when cool. I played my first tournaments was with with that racket. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah, we were saying how it's like very nostalgic and I used to always have this answer in my head, but then I was looking at photos and it wasn't the racket that I was always answering with. So it's always fun to talk about like the first one you actually remember. Yeah, I wish I could have <laughs> like mentioned a more new racket, right? So it didn't <laughs> seem that old. Oh no, it's all good. We're you're hey, along with the rest of us. Age <laughs> is just a number. That's what they keep <laughs> telling me. Um, okay, well, from there, I want to jump in, but you come from a tennis family. Talk to me a little bit about your family and then the origin story of unique sports and turn a grip and how that all came about. All right, no problem. So uh, yeah, my dad started this business uh, 50 years ago um, out of the love of playing tennis, and he just wanted to make some game improving accessories. I think one of my earliest memories working in the business was going to the lumber mill and sifting sawdust because before grips existed, you you know, guys like Yvonne Lendl were putting sawdust in their pockets to dry their hands on their leather grip, which is crazy. That's so crazy. I was there putting it in gigantic bags and then bringing it back to work and selling it in little pouches under the unique sports uh, sawdust grip. Um, so yeah, so then from there, it just sort of expanded into more and more accessories. We added turn a grip along the way. Um, and then really, uh, unique sports started, you know, venturing into some other businesses as well that were outside of tennis, like in baseball and some other sports. Um, so we eventually broke off and made Turna its own brand. It made sense. Turna Group was our flagship product. Um, and so we just branded everything Turna from that point. So if you look at it, like Procter and Gamble has, you know, how many brands that they have. Mm -hmm. And so Unique Sports is that. And then underneath that, we have Turn as the tennis brand. Nice. Love that. That makes complete sense to someone that works at Tennis Warehouse, but operates under a sports warehouse umbrella. So, right. yeah, definitely. Okay. How did this light blue grip that doesn't slip come about because it is iconic it is legendary it has been in the market you see players of all levels using it we know very notable players in the past have used it what's the origin story between or what's the origin story of turn a grip right so the initial product was actually developed as a chamois uh, but it didn't work very well and you know why this chamois didn't work very well because it got too grippy when it got wet, which is still the exact same premise that holds today with Turn a Grip. Um, and why it's probably so popular is because when you put it on and you sweat, it actually starts to work better. And that's probably one of the only products as a grip that does that. That's amazing. And who were some of the first pros to endorse the Turn a Grip? Uh, well, by far and away, the most influential pro that endorsed Tardigrip was none other than Pete Sampras, right? Yeah. And so back in those days, there wasn't a whole lot of endorsing of athletes. Like these days, everything, every athlete's buttoned up from head to toe. Uh, everything is spoken for. Uh, it's very competitive to get any real estate on any athlete these days. Uh, but back then it was like, hey, Pete, you use Tardigrip. Would you like to sign a deal? And it was like so much, it was so easy uh, back then. And he's like, sure. Um, and so that literally uh, changed the trajectory of Turnagrip, and there was a whole crop of players 
uh, back then, like that we're using Turner Group, even, you know, Agassi and, and Chang, and Courier and uh, the entire American boom of tennis, they were all using Turner Group, right? Um, so, yeah, it really changed everything for us uh, with the signing of Pete. And he was with us for many, many years. And I was going to say, like, completely, like, iconic in terms of, like, we all can just see the sweat just piling off his forehead, <laughs> like, that's when you right. think about him playing. So to have a grip that works for someone that sweats that much, which many of us do, um, that is a lot to say about the proof in the pudding behind Turner yeah. Grip. <laughs> Um, let's see what, uh, do you have any fun Pete Sampras stories to share or any, any fun <laughs> athlete stories? I know you guys have worked with a lot. Well, I think the biggest shocker when you looked at like Pete's racket is just how much lead tape he had oh my gosh. stacked around <laughs> the edges. I mean, it looks like a pyramid. So, I mean, playing with such a modified heavy racket, it's really interesting, but on the player side, it's, you know, we don't have that many funny stories. I think it's much more interesting when I look at like uh, somebody like James Blake, right? Who, you know, when you look at Turner Grip, it started off as the original width of Turner Grip. We never mess with the length. And mm -hmm. so what we do through the years is we've made it wider and wider and introduced an XL and an XXL. Uh, but with James, it's like, hey, James, we've got this XL version. We're selling it really well. Would you like to try? He's like, no, absolutely not. I got to have that one. And then you ask, somebody like Andy Roddick, and he's like, I can't play with that skinny grip. You need to make it bigger than your XL, which is why we created the XXL. <laughs> you know, every single player that we have a relationship with and have had through the years, uh, they all have their exact preferences on what it is. Um, and that's a big reason why we could never change Turner Grip either. We have no intention to ever change Turner Grip. It's been the same since 1977. And uh, I mean, People know it so well. They know it like it's part of their skin. And if we were to make any alterations, we would get a lot of blowback. So believe me, it's the same as it was and the same as it's always been. Nice. That's good to hear because us tennis players can be a little mental <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> our gear and our rituals. Um, you just mentioned the XL and the XXL. That gets very confusing to consumers, I think. So I would love for you to explain that one more time and how you won't change the length, but the width does change. Yeah, I mean, we have a manufacturing process that we have to adhere to, right? It's not as easy as like, well, let's just make it longer and let's just do this to it. It's just not the way it works. Um, so um, the one of the flexibilities that we can have is to just make it a little bit wider. And so as a result of making your grip wider, it just gives you more coverage on your handle. Um, and so a guy like John Isner can wrap that thing all the way up, you know, to the to the throat and beyond if you wanted to. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it is confusing. If it was up to me, we would just stick with XL forever. But we just have too many people that, you know, that or look at Gasquet, right? That guy has the, the original turn of grip and we can't send him the big 30 pack rolls of tape. He needs it individual strips. Oh so we gosh. send him like 900 grips at a time with 900 individual strips so he can change it probably 900 times in like a month, right? Or, oh, man. or less. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then let's talk about the color. It's iconic. It's recognizable everywhere. I honestly would say like if you were to walk into any club right now, there's someone using Turner Grip. So I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> um, tell us why that blue color is so iconic, why you guys landed on blue, how it works better maybe than white, black, pink. I know you guys do have a pink though. Uh, yeah, we have uh, grips in other colors under, but it's not Turner Grip. We have Turner Attack and Mega Attack, and we can play with other colors there. But Turner Grip and the blue has just become iconic, as you say. Um, it's something that stood out early on for us and became very identifiable for us uh, very early. And then in 1996, uh, we were able to apply for a trademark of a color. And that was the very, we were part of the very first group of companies that were able to get granted a trademark for color. And when you think of other companies that have uh, trademarks for colors, you're looking at UPS Brown, Tiffany Blue, mm. Owens Corning Pink, Turner Grip Blue. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that was the first three or four companies ever that were able uh, to do that. And so um, obviously, when you get a trademark for a uh, color, you don't really want to change it. You want it to be as identifiable as possible. It's a huge 
advantage for us because you can watch TV, you can open a magazine and you can see a player that we don't endorse that's using Turner Group. I mean, most players, we're not in like a formal endorsement relationship. People are using it despite their racket contracts, despite any other contracts they have because they need it and they have it. And I, I don't know if there's a whole lot of other grips or brands or products that fall into that category where they use it, you know, against their current uh, contracts. So, mm -hmm. uh, but we love that it's, it's identifiable that way. And, you know, UPS wouldn't drive around in white trucks and, you know, Tiffany's always going to come in the same case. It's just you, when you have that, you stick with it. Um, we can create other colors and other grips, but Turner Group is always going to be blue. Nice. Now, I'm kind of generating some more questions in my head as we speak. You guys are, your headquarters are located very close to our Alpharetta location. So talk, That's right. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about what it's like a day in a life over there, how many employees you have, how many people are working specifically in tennis, and why that spot in Alpharetta. Well, geez, we've been living, uh, I mean, I was raised in Atlanta, uh, played tennis as a junior in Georgia. Um, I work with my brother and my dad. We have, uh, it's, it fluctuates a little bit, but we have anywhere between 60 and 90 employees at any given time. But a lot of it is we do, um, we do a lot of our own manufacturing and production and assembly in our plant here uh, in Alpharetta. So, um, but yeah, it's hectic. You know, I do everything from sales and, and marketing to uh, servicing stringing machines to, you know, doing product development, product testing, managing people. I mean, when you're in a small family business, you do everything. That's awesome. So. And you hit on marketing. I love the marketing that you guys use because it's very nostalgic and we see players from, you know, current and former players that we can relate to and remember, but also some similar, it does it hasn't really changed dramatically. You're not trying to be like that flashy new, like look at us, but like there's something very comfortable and familiar about the marketing. So maybe hit a little bit on your marketing tactics. Well, I mean, I believe it takes a long time for the consumer in tennis to actually understand that there's a new product out on the marketplace. And we're going to be talking about one of our new products today. But, you know, the last major grip that we launched was MegaTac, which is, you know, by far and away still the tackiest grip that you're ever going to put on your racket. And we beat the drum for six, seven, eight years. And it took a long time <laughs> before it became sort of embedded in the pro shops um, and sort of, you know, even starting to approach the sales of Turner Group, but um, it takes a very long time. So we like the consistency. We don't have fall lines and spring lines yeah. and closeouts and things like that. We have, we have our products. They, you know, they, we make high performance products that, you know, are obviously standing the test of time at this point. Um, still used on tour for you know 30, 40 years now. Um, and continuing to innovate. So yeah, we, we like to keep it pretty simple and focus on uh, the products that we're creating. We spend a, a lot of time like creating things that we like, like as, as a tennis player and as, you know, we're and just having that love of tennis, like tinkering and innovating and finding things that we really love uh, is it's important to us and really keeps us going. Like we don't just take a product uh, from China and slap a label on it and say, here's our new string, here's our new grip. You know, we, I like to think we take a, a much deeper dive into the actual uh, materials and performance of all the products uh, that we launch. And um, especially when it comes to grips and things that are going to be used on the Pro Tour. I mean, we test that stuff extremely rigorously and, and we say no uh, a lot. Like, like Megatac probably took seven, eight years to develop the new product Turnitough that we'll talk today. We say it took six or seven years. I think it took 10 years. I've been Dang. I've been play testing <laughs> stuff for so long that you forget that you're doing it. And then, you know, and then you finally get something that you really like and you're able to bring it to market. And it's very it's that's super exciting for us. Well, that's awesome. Well, that's a good segue. Let's talk about the other grips in the lineup that you've got going. And maybe you can just kind of differentiate what player each one would be for this mega tag? I've used it. I am not a tacky grip gal. <laughs> it is tacky, man. So, I know. but <laughs> talk that's to the me. point, yeah. right? Yeah, like, so, it. 
you when you have your mission of what you want to develop, like Megatac's the great example because we we came out with Megatac and we must have tested. I can't tell you how many versions of that we tested. It's like it's not tacky enough. It's not tacky enough. And then when it beca- and then when we sent it out to our play testers and they're like, "This is crazy. This is way too tacky." We're like, "We we we did it. <laughs> yeah. We we did exactly what we wanted to do, which is to make the tackiest." grip you will ever put in your hand. And some people are like, this is the greatest grip I've ever put on my racket, hands down, like by far. And then you have some people are like, I hate it. <laughs> I can't use that. It's, it's way too tacky, you know, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine creating products that that serve very extreme niches because that's what tennis is. And you, you, People have such strong preferences in what one, you know, not Turner Grip doesn't work for everybody. I know that. Megatac doesn't work for everybody. I totally get that. But what it is, where you live, the climate you live in, how much your hand sweats, all those are factors in what's going to work for you. And I really, you know, we've spent some time, you know, trying to develop products that are right for different climates and different people. Um, so I don't think there's really one grip that fits all. I don't think there's one grip that suits all conditions either. I mean, you can certainly see it in the U.S. Open. Uh, there's a lot of players that come into that tournament, pro players that should have full knowledge of, <laughs> yeah. of plenty of time. And they get out there and they're wiping their hand, blowing on their hand, wondering why they can't hold the racket. And sure enough, you know, they talk to some players, guys like the Bryans and, and Andy Murray and guys like that that have used Turner Grip forever. And they'll just tell them like, you got to use Turner Grip, man. Yeah. You're, you're in the summer swing of tournaments. It's time to change your grip uh, to something that's going to work for that. Now, and do you need to use Turner Grip when it's 70 degrees and no humidity? You know, maybe not. Some people do. They definitely do. Some people use it all year round. But man, in the, in the middle of the summer, I still think the sweat absorption is is second to none. And, and the pros are, are have started, you know, or they always have started to switch to it a little bit heavier during those summer months. Nice. And that's for me very fun to see. I love seeing players make gear adjustments. What I don't like is someone who suffers through their <laughs> pro match with points on the line when they know there's products that can help them. Or maybe they don't know. I don't know. But um, someone should tell them. Yeah. Well, hopefully they're listening because I would say that some pros aren't as educated as we would like them to be. But they got coaches, they got hitting partners. Go. Come on. People. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I know. It's true. And like, yeah, it's it's wild sometimes where you will talk to a player and they just aren't as educated as you think. And you're like, okay, well, let me give you a few minutes of education. Or like, try this. Like, I'm always that kind of person, like, pull it out of my bag. Try this, try this, try right. Turna. So um Actually, we had a few user-generated questions from our message board, and this one kind of falls into that. And it was, um, was Turner Grip intentionally made to feel the same on both sides? Because there's, you know, a lot of grips that we see come out of other manufacturers. You can only play with it, well, technically. Some of the poor players will flip the grip. But it doesn't have the same feel on both sides, but Turner feels the same on both sides. Was that intentional, or is it just part of the process? I don't think we can take credit for it being an intentional part of the <laughs> of the process. I think it's more of a byproduct of the way we manufacture it. Um, and it's pretty cool that you can flip it over on both sides. I mean, there's a lot of questions. Do I use the side that has the cellophane on it or not? Yeah. And which side do I use? They look slightly different, yeah. but you know, may, maybe there's a difference. I think at the end of the day, it's going to perform, you know, 99.99% exactly the same as the other side. Um, so uh, it's just the way it is. There's no, you know, treatment on one side or the other. So you can, you, yeah, you can use both sides. Awesome. And also like speaking for those kids, especially like high school and college players that like maybe are on a budget, they appreciate being able to flip it over and it still performs. So that's cool. Um, let's see. Do you want to talk about Turn It Tough? Sure. So, so one of the uh, biggest issues that we've heard of Turn a Grip through the years is that it's not durable enough. And, and that's OK. I mean, Turn a Grip is not meant to be this something you put on your racket and you play an entire season with. Right. Or, or your whole tournament with. I mean, Turn a Grip, I use the analogy that it's like 
if you're going to race a car in Formula One or NASCAR, you're not going to put the same tire on that you're going to put on your minivan <laughs> to go down to Florida, right? Yeah, right? You're going to use a high performance tire to try to get the most performance out of it. And that, that is exactly what Turn a Grip is. It's a high performance grip that you're going to get the best. You know, maybe it could be a set depending on the conditions. And yeah, you got to change it, but it's going to be the best performing grip while you have it on there. Um, and if it's if it lasts you a whole match, great. But I probably wouldn't even recommend that you use it more than one match uh, because it's going to start to break down. But honestly, all grips after about, you know, a match probably should be changed. It might not fray, but that feeling of any type of absorption or tackiness is pretty much gone after any match. So, you know, although it's the fraying, you know, kind of can be a little bit unnerving, it's still performing. Um, but regardless, we wanted to make a product. It was our mission this time, similar to MegaTac, to make the tackiest grip available. We wanted to make an extremely durable version of Turner Group, something that absorbed sweat, got tackier when it got wet, felt like Turner Grip, but you know, it's going to last uh, a lot longer. So we love to listen to comments. We listen to, you know, the feedback that's coming back. It just sometimes it takes maybe 10 years to, yeah. <laughs> to come up with something that we really like, right? I'd love to be able to produce something in a year and be like, I've solved the problem, but that's not the way it is. Uh, it's very complicated and we do a lot of testing uh, before ever, you know, putting that out. So, yeah, so we came out with Turn It Tough, uh, T-U-F-F. And I think you will see if, you know, the play test on your board was, I think, very positive. Uh, people were surprised at how long it actually lasted and performed. Um, so, yeah, we're very excited about it. That's amazing. And you continue to kind of hit on things that I also am trying to like educate more players in. It's hard for us because we've been in tennis forever, our whole lives. We really don't know anything else, but we still have this whole group. I, I'm still calling them pandemic players because it's awesome. They started playing tennis in 2020, 2021, and they're still playing and they're loving it. However, they missed some of the education along the way. And it's like a wide range of ages that it's, I've had to tell people like, yes, your or your overgrip is meant to be replaced. Like, it's okay. Right. <laughs> it's okay to take it off. Like, please take it off, especially yeah. if it's dirty. If it's so, um, this is like good education for those players because they're still they're loving the sport. And I've seen players get so much better just since they've started a couple years ago. So uh, as long as we can connect the improvement on their game and improvement on their education in tennis gear, I think we're on the right path. So. I mean, you you have to change your grip, right? Yeah, like, you have to. <laughs> you, 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 that's the part that where your hand actually touches the racket, you know? It's not your strings. It's the part where you actually feel, and it, you can lose points yeah. because your racket twists in your hand, right? If if it's twisting and you're having a hard time holding on to it, A, either replace your grip or B, find a different grip that works for you. Yeah. There's a lot of options with the, uh, you know out there There's that's something for everybody, but by far and away, you know, whether or not you use turn grip, I don't care. You got to change your grip. Like I'll see, I'll see, you know, my kids play tournament tennis and I'll go here in Atlanta to like a hot summer tournament. Right. And this is kids in the twelves and yeah. in fourteens. And the, you know, how much has dad spent to try to get mm -hmm. uh, their kid to good enough to play tournaments, right? They spend a lot of money, a lot of time commuting, a lot of time on, a lot of money on shoes and rackets and strings. And then you look at some of these grips and they look like they've been there since, you know, 1980. Right? Like the, thing, like the, the white grip is totally brown. The Turner grip is totally frayed. And they, the kids will like, the rackets will fly straight out of their hands in the middle of the summer. I'm like, you've spent so much time, effort, and money to get the child to this point. Take a moment right, and change the grip before the match. So that's not the decider. Let let something else be the decider, but your grip shouldn't be the one that lets you down. Yeah, I'm all about the controlling what you can control. Exactly. Um, but also like I'm, I'm working with a high school team right now, so I'm really trying to get them to take care of their equipment and like take that as um, a pride of your part of your game. And for many of us, re-gripping a racket is very methodical and like it's almost like meditative where it's so nice to just go through that like calming re-grip sensation and like be ready to go and know that that you're prepared in that regard. 
I think. That's right. Make it a part of your pre-match ritual. You yeah, know? totally. Okay, let's see. I know there's a few more questions that are message board generated, so let's let's get to them. Okay, back to Turna Tough. We're gonna go a little bit over that one again. Is it thicker than the standard Turna grip? Yeah, so Turna grip comes in at about 0.44 millimeters or 0.45. When you start doing measurements on a grip that's that thin, you'll get a, a variance of by a couple millimeters. So if the standard for turn grip is 0.44 millimeters, you're looking at turn a tough at about 0.46 millimeters. If you can tell me the difference between <laughs> 0.44 and 0.46, you're better than me. So it's, is it a little thicker? Technically, it's like 0.1 millimeter thicker on average, but it's very uh, not perceptible um, and certainly not thick compared to some of the other grips, which usually will go between like 0.50 or 0.55 uh, millimeters out there. Which now on we talking about educating. Now we've got the people on the other hand. They're like, oh, it's a little bit heavier. It's gonna add swing weight to my racket. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just let them have that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you already kind of hit on this, but I like the reference of how like turn grip wasn't made specifically to be the most durable, and it probably should be changed every match, especially if you're competing at the high level. We we see runners do this with their training shoes and their race shoes, and I know you're a runner, so you know. Um, but is uh, one of the questions was, is Turna Tough designed for the same weather conditions as the original Turna Grip? That's a, a great question. So definitely if you're in South Florida and it's August and, and you are just dripping mm. with sweat, like it's hard to imagine just how much sweat you can produce uh, <laughs> in some of the conditions for, you know, a couple months out of the year in some of the very humid climates. And I'll still say that turn a grip cannot be beat in that situation. And will turn a tough fail in that situation? You know, it's not <laughs> going to be as good as turn a grip in that very extreme moment. Uh, but can you use it the other 10 months out of the year? Sure. Yeah. Um, it's just by, by the, the downfall of making it more durable is that it's not turn a grip. Mm -hmm. No, that <laughs> right? makes it's, sense. That's why there's it's still a different one. Not, it's not exactly the same. It's not, the materials aren't exactly the same. They're just a little different. And yeah, there's going to be a moment where you're going to prefer turn a grip if you've been using turn a grip all year or turn a tough all year. You're going to, there's going to be a month or two in the deep south where you're going to wish you had <laughs> turn a grip. Or move to California where we don't That's have right. the humidity. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know every time someone references like the summers in the South, I'm like, oh man, I'm sweating just thinking about it. I know we play all year round here, right? So we have to create, I think creating all these different grips is born out of the fact that we play in January and we play in August. We play all year round and, you know, leagues, you can have multiple leagues here. Uh, for you know all year round and you could be in multiple leagues at any time during the, in the year so finding something that works in February is going to be a lot different than finding something that works in August it is so extreme here in Georgia from one end to the next yeah uh, we don't get that perfect like California you know 70 weather <laughs> where it's just like oh yeah it's pretty much the same maybe a little chilly today <laughs> right know. oh man well we did just have a heat wave it hit like 100 last week and I know that's right it does get out <laughs> there I know but then it dropped back down we're okay we're in the 70s again thank yeah. goodness um, you uh, referenced it takes a long time for things to come to market and as we we've spoken a bunch on this podcast before about like rackets you know they they come out and they're already working on the update to that one we talk about strings there's not often a lot of times you're seeing new strings in the market because they don't really leave the market unless there's a reason for them to so uh, what about grips are you guys working on anything new at the moment anything you can share <laughs> <laughs> hey we just came out of a new grip that took 10 years i know talk to me in 10 more years and i'll, I'll figure out if we have something but um nothing in the in the works for grips i mean our main focus uh for development is really on our stringing machine side. We're to the point where we're developing our own features. We've got patented features that are, you know, highly sought after now, like the down press clamp. So a lot of stringers uh, and consumers are coming to us looking specifically for some of our technology. And we're very proud of that, that we're adding something to the machine space that hasn't been there previously. We're making stringing easier and faster than it's, than it's ever been. And it's, 
you know, I think we also are pretty good about not charging too much for any of this stuff. So we put a lot of value in, you know, trying to come up with products that are, you know, attainable for uh, consumers and, and clubs alike. Nice. Um, I just thought of this and uh, it goes with the blue theme and it goes with the turn of theme, but I was going to ask you to hit a little bit on your string line because two of my players that I coach, my one and two actually, use Big Hitter Blue. So talk to me a little bit about your strings. What kind of performance do you guys offer? Obviously, there's a little bit of everything in there, but maybe run us through the line real quick. Sure. If you were to ask me, I think that's one of the most underrated parts of our line. Like when you when we look at the test from the uh, Racket Sports Industry magazine, we are always on the top. Uh, we have a couple, I think out of the top, like five or six strings, we have three of the strings that generate the most spin. And that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, got that's a big the, deal. The big hitter silver seven, we've got the uh, black seven and big hitter blue rough, right? So if you like a really spinny string, we've got those. Um, we have smooth polys as well that are all range in different uh, power levels. But really what we look for is like comfortable strings that people can play with uh, for a long time. Uh, usually polys, they, they start really great and then they degrade until you, they're no longer really playable or they break. Um, so we like to kind of smooth that out a little bit and have something that's a little bit more, uh, has a little more longevity. And the same thing on the strings applies with our testing. Like, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many strings that I <laughs> test that I uh, just cut straight out. Um, so just like our grips, we do a tremendous amount of testing. We ask a lot of questions and we, we just try to put out stuff that basically me, my brother and my dad like first, because yeah, I think we're the harshest critics. And then after that, I think I give it to my kids who are, who are not afraid to tell me anything nice. uh, ever. So <laughs> they, they'll tell me uh, every bad thing about everything that we put out in, in a heartbeat, right? So I always uh, run it by them. But other than that, we test it with pros uh, that are very close to us that have worked with us for a long time. Uh, before we even consider putting stuff out on the market. So my my discard pile is huge, I can tell you that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and tell us about some of the other products that you guys make for tennis players that we might not even be familiar are under the umbrella of Unique Sports or Turna. Oh, man. I mean, we have had thousands of products, I think, for tennis, right? <laughs> yeah. Every, if, if you have anything you need to do for a grip, whether it's like rosin or the tacky towel or whatever it is that you need to put on your hand to uh, achieve a better grip, we make it. I guarantee you. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> don't you guys you do the cooling towels also? That's you. We do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cooling towels, all kinds of towels, but uh, yeah, it's extensive. Um, court equipment, you know, type, all the court yeah, equipment. All the court equipment. <laughs> if you go and you look at uh, your nets, a lot of times uh, you'll see it's a turn of net. Uh, a lot of the scoring devices, the benches, uh, rollers, which are pretty hard to you know you don't really pay attention to that stuff. But yeah, it's it's fun, and we've just continued to grow uh, year after year in, in different things that you know we want to offer. So it's fun. Love that. Um, a grip question that I missed earlier. Is it possible to make a tacky grip that has good sweat absorption? Um, so I would say uh, not this year. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. See, you're right. always working on something. <laughs> but I think like uh, at just the, the manufacturing level, when you feel the tack on a grip, that polyurethane, uh, which is what makes it feel sticky and tacky, is what you're feeling. Um, and just by the nature of putting that much uh, polyurethane in the material, uh, it doesn't absorb sweat, it doesn't wick sweat. What it does is it puts it right back in your hand. And so if you're looking for a sweaty solution, well, usually you should avoid tacky grips because the sweat only sits between your grip and your hand. Mm -hmm. If you don't sweat or your hand doesn't sweat or you're in a cooler climate, you can get away with tacky grips uh, and, and they work great. I mean, I use I use tacky grips in the, in the winter as well, uh, but um, trying to bridge the gap between a polyurethane that absorbs sweat is materially not possible for us at the moment. But, you know, hey, maybe that's the next goal uh, that we work on. I think if someone says your tacky grip is absorbent, I don't think that's accurate. I think there's something else going on. Um, but, you know. 
but no. So no, not not. Uh, I would say no, not for now. But uh, again, we love playing with materials and trying to find uh, something that works. Awesome. And I'm going to start kind of wrapping it up, but I wanted to hear you talk a little bit about the importance of working with your family and how you guys are all still very close and working family business and all that. And if you thought this is what you would end up doing with your life. <laughs> no, right. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it was obviously a part of my life from a, a young child, uh, but I didn't always work in the business. I worked for a Fortune 50 company out on the West Coast as well. Uh, came back and joined uh, the company about 17 years ago. Um, and it's been working, you know, in sales and marketing and development and stuff like that. But yeah, working with my brother and my dad, it's it's incredible. We know, uh, I know exactly what my dad's going to say on uh, pretty much everything that I bring to him and, and vice versa. We know each other so well. We see each other every day. We uh, eat lunch together every day. Aww. So yeah, it's it's cool. And then the people in our office uh, are, for the most part, play tennis. We're all on local teams here in Atlanta. So if anyone's listening that plays Alta, there's a good chance you've played Myself, my brother, my dad, or any of the customer service people that work for us. So uh, we are all active in the community, and and uh, you know we all we we participate in that as well. So yeah, it's incredible. Oh, that's amazing. That's the one thing I am jealous of. Slow is not like a tennis hotbed the way at the Atlanta area is, and I always hear about Alta, and I'm like, I want to play Alta. But that's live, right. But yeah. live in California. Got to bring your cooler of beer. As oh your, yeah. As your, <laughs> oh, I'm down. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, and yeah. then last time I saw you, you were a pretty serious trail runner. How's that going? Uh, it's going well. So um, I, I really like to run those 100 mile races and the long races. So Dang. I don't know how many more years. I always feel like it's going to be my last. And I think every time I finish one, I retire and then, uh, you know, and I play a little tennis and then I go back to running again. So That's either awesome. way, it's fun. Just try to balance it all and, and, and just have fun with it. That's amazing. I I work, we work next to our running warehouse uh, team and the person that sits right behind me is an ultra runner. She just ran something yesterday and I'm just always in awe of you guys. That's crazy. So <laughs> I cool. know I'm a big, I'm a big customer of running warehouse. Way, so. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Amazing. It's a different mindset for sure, but so cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Did I, did I miss any questions that you're asked often about Turner Group? I don't think so. I think we covered pretty covered much it. everything. Thank okay. you. Okay, amazing. Well, that's it. And you can go buy Turn a Grip, Turn a Tough, Turn a Tack, everything Turn a, Turn a Big Hitter Blue, all the things, all the Turn a Grips and more and beyond. And we will link everything in this podcast, in the show notes. And we even have some videos that Chris filmed with your dad from a few years back. We'll link those too. That would be a good yep. little throwback. Okay, cool. Amazing. And then how, I know you guys have social media, so how can people follow you guys on social? Uh, Turna underscore tennis. I'm sure if you put Turna tennis anywhere, you will find, find it. it. Uh, would love to connect with you, especially on Instagram. We do some pretty uh, fun and creative posts sometimes. So. Um, reach out, tag us. I often repost people. A lot of people tag Turn to Tennis. I often repost that stuff because I love it. That's awesome. So you'll be able to find all the links in our show notes. And if you guys have any questions, let us know. I'm sure Kevin will be checking out the questions, answers, and comments. So let us know. We'll be we'll be reaching out and to answer it all. But thank you so much, Kevin. This was such a fun right. chat. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Happy hitting. All right. <laughs>